Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a piece of plum wood. It is roughly eight and a half by 14. It's about 30% uh, moisture content, so it's not dry. It does have a crack developing right here uh, where the pith is still located. Just, just barely any pith, but there is some. And there's a little crack there. This end is kind of interesting looking. But I think it's going to be okay. It's got a pretty good crack going up here. But uh, I don't think that's going to come off. It kind of looks like three pieces of wood. But it's not. It's all one. This doesn't come up here very far. And I don't know what we're going to do with this. It's going to be a bowl of some kind. And it's going to have a, a base. Duh. I'm going to mount it with my woodworm screw right in here. I've cleared out a spot so it'll be flat. And we'll work on the bottom side first we'll put a probably a tenon on there and it's just going to be a fun piece something I haven't done for a while I want to try and keep as much of this bark on as possible who knows what it's going to be I, I don't I don't have a good idea let's get started so we'll just get this screwed onto the woodworm screw here feels pretty solid it's not going to be balanced. Uh, I did find the center as closely as I possibly could, but this end here is just bigger than the other end. And I want it centered. I want the bowl part centered, so I, I didn't pay too much attention to balance. It's not bad, but it's definitely heavier on that one end. And we're going to use tailstock support, of course. And I don't know what kind of speed we're going to be able to get out of this. It's about 550 lathe is starting to shake a little bit. We'll probably start there. Let me get my mask and face shield on and sharpen up my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Okay, let's mark out for our tenon. Okay, it's the inside mark. If I can mark that with a pencil, get a little better. That's where we want to go. That's going to fit my larger jaws. And then we'll just work up to that. I'm going to switch to a swept back gouge to uh, create a dovetail on this tenon. Okay, that's good. Now I had in mind something I wanted to do a little bit different. Uh, well, a few things different with this piece, but for the bottom I wanted to create a base that would run off of the edge so it would be two half arcs like that. So I need to come in from the end. I'm still thinking it out, sorry. But I also want to uh, sweep these ends up so that when it's sitting on a table you can get your hands under the, the two ends and pick it up because this is going to be probably pretty heavy. So maybe I should be working on that first. I don't know how far I want to sweep it. I really didn't want to sweep it all that much, but some. We'll just play it by ear.
Yeah, that's what I had in mind. Two half uh, circles. Looks like it might be pretty wood, huh? Yeah, that's good. Oh boy, I hope that stays together. All right, we'll work on the inside. Well, I was just looking at it, and I think I'm going to uh, kind of make this a bead instead of flat like it is. Yeah, that's good. Okay, stand by for sanding. So I'm going to start with my 2 inch sanding disc, uh, 80 grit, and I will sand up through 400. I'm going to start in reverse with my angle drill in reverse. That way, as this comes up, the sanding disc goes down against it, and it makes for a more aggressive cut. And then I'll go forward with it, with my drill in forward, and do the same thing. Back and forth, back and forth, up through 400, and I'll bring you back when it's time to put some sanding sealer on here. This was not an easy sanding job. This was very difficult, and I can't tell you that it's perfect, because it's not. It's, it's difficult to get in around these areas, around my uh, base, because as this comes around, you're hitting a lot of air and then bang it hits your sanding disc air bang I mean it's just over and over and over I can tell you that it's very smooth it's got some nice grain going on here and so I'm pretty happy with it I don't know what I'm gonna do on these ends once I get up on the top side I don't know if I intend to round them over from the top side down or if I'm going to leave them square like that or what. I just don't know yet. So this is the first of, uh, I imagine, at least two, maybe three coats of sanding sealer. And I will leave it to dry for a half an hour or so. I'll come back out and use steel wool to smooth it out. Put on another coat. Wait a half an hour. Lather, rinse, repeat. It's already drying pretty fast, which is kind of surprising because it's only about 52 degrees out here right now. Hey, I discovered a new YouTube channel today. Uh, guy's name is Billy Burt. Look him up on YouTube, Billy Burt. He does all kinds of wood working, but he, uh, he does a lot of wood turning as well, and, and he has a, a nice manner of delivering his information. It's comforting to watch him. Billy Burt, give him a look. So, here we go, coat number one. There's some nice grain in there, huh? That kind of has some chatoyance going on right there. All right, I'll see you back here when it's time to what? I don't know if I'm going to put uh, shellac over this or, or what, or maybe I'll put shellac on after I've done the whole thing, after the top turning is done. That's probably what I'll do. So I'll see you back here when it's time to turn this around and start hollowing it out. Well, I kind of lost track. I don't know if I got three or four coats of uh, sanding sealer on here, but in any event, enough. So it's time to turn this around, work on the top side. I have to switch my chuck over to the one that has the larger jaws on it. I believe I've got a pretty good fit. We'll find out here. Now, what what I always do, same routine every time, bring up the tailstock and use that drive center or uh, live center 
to push the tenon into the chuck while it's loose and then tighten the chuck and that way I know that it's well centered and well seated just get it good and tight and if you can see that opening there you can see I've got a real good fit and that's what I want because I'm not going to be using the live center or yeah I'm not going to be using the live center all that much and again I need to tighten the set screw the reversing set screw so the chuck won't come off when I switch into reverse okay we're ready let me uh, sharpen up my bowl gouge 5 8 inch bowl gouge get my mask and face shield on and we'll get to turning I've got a couple of different ideas on how I want to do the top side here so I'm gonna kind of sneak up on a bowl size and see if there's room out here to do something else so I'm not I'm not gonna start out here and just go in I'm, I'm gonna kind of sneak up on it and we're still turning at 550 rpm because it's still out of balance and that's because of this end is thicker than the other end. What I'm thinking is, uh, you, you remember how I put a kind of a bead on the bottom for the base? It's a half, starts, in this case it starts right here, comes around about like that, and comes back out here, and that's the foot of the bowl. I thought about duplicating that on top here, separate from the bowl, leave some bark around here, my bead, and then some more bark. And I can do that, it looks like, at this point. If I go much bigger, I might lose that opportunity. I don't know if that'll look good or not. I guess I can do it, and if it doesn't look good, I can uh, just come in here and make the ball that big. But the problem is there, I'll run off the sides if I come out here too far. We don't want that. Maybe I should make that determination right now, huh? I think what I'm going to do is take this hollowing tool and use that to create this side of the bead. And this side of the bead and then just work it work the bead out of there which of course will do the same thing on this side because you know there it is now I think I'll, I think I'm gonna give that a try I, I just I don't know if it'll look good but we won't know until we try here we go I don't know if I'm at the right height here yeah I am It's different, isn't it? Well, I, I have to get that bark cleared off of there, so I just have to keep going deeper. I'm tempted to go even deeper on this inside one. Not the outside, just the inside, because it'll it'll still hang in there. I could even go in at a bit of an angle towards the bowl, kind of give the bowl a look of coming in here like that. I was afraid I wasn't going to have enough. Sorry, I was afraid I wasn't going to have enough thickness because I upswept these wings, but it appears I have plenty of thickness, so I can still go much deeper if I need to. What do you think? Leave this one and come around here with this one? Or will that really screw it up? Maybe I've already screwed it up. Who knows? Who knows? I, I've never seen anything like this before. So who knows what it's supposed to look like? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Gonna be fun to sand, isn't it? Oh man, I forgot about that part. <laughs> my two inch sanding disc isn't gonna fit in there, so I guess it's my fingers. Ow, 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 ow. Well, maybe my sandal flex will get in there. Well, boy, I gotta make a decision now. Come all the way around with this? Well, I'm inclined to do that. And maybe towards the towards the center bottom of the bowl. 
I just don't know if that's a good idea or not. I don't know if this looks good. Does that just look plain weird? Where are you guys when I need you? Come on, speak up. What if I just bring the whole bowl out here and just leave this? I don't know. Maybe I've just ruined it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one on, on around. I'm going to go back to uh, hollowing this out so I know how thick my wall is going to be because I'm coming in here quite a ways. Back to this. Got to get deeper on the sides here. Well, that's the darndest thing you ever saw, isn't it? No particular purpose, just just trying something different. Looks like I'm about deep enough. I could go a little bit deeper, and I am going to. Well, that's pretty deep are deep enough. I got rid of all the bark in there. I don't know if it looks good. Maybe I should come down now with a little straighter side, the side of this bead. I don't know. I must have had a bad dream or something. Yeah, I'm going to clean up the side of this bead here a little bit, a little bit straighter in. If I could see it. <laughs> no, I've never seen one either. I think I need to undercut here a little more. I've got the outside pretty decent, but uh, I've got a flat spot here. Over here I don't, but here I do. And here I do. Well, here. Not very odd. Well, I think we're going to call that good. So, I don't think this would be much fun for you to watch. So, I'll bring you back uh, at a later date if anything develops. But certainly by the time uh, it's time to put some sanding sealer on here. Which is going to present its own problems. Like how to smooth it out. By hand, I guess. Just like this. So I'll see you back here later. Well, here's where I am after a couple hours of hand sanding. It's looking better. It's looking good. It's not great. It's not finished. But it's never going to look as nice as the bottom does or as any other piece I've ever done. It's not going to look really, really nice as far as detail finish. In here, down in here, it's just hard to get in there. I just can't get any motion going. I did at one point <laughs> take a strip of sandpaper, fold it into quarters so that it was about three inches long and I'm hanging on to it right here and I had it sticking in there and I spun this but it's just too scary. I, I, that's just gonna hurt when it comes around but I did it and I did it out here. This was easier out here. Um, mostly I've just been doing this with sandpaper. Now I'm to the point, I've done that all through 180. It's all sanded through 180, including the bark. The bark is sanded. And I'll tell you what, this might not look like a lot right now, 
But once uh, I get some sanding sealer on here and then some uh, shellac, this bark is just going to pop. And this will be a nice creamy brown like the bottom is. It's, it's really going to look quite different. This will stand out real nice. This will stand out. All the bark will look nice. And this will look nice in here. So I'm going to start sanding the bowl now with my 2 inch uh, sanding disc. So I'm going through uh, from 80 through 400. And as I get back up to 220, I'm going to go in here with my sanding disc. I'll just peel the sanding disc off the drill and sand in here just like I've been doing, hand sanding with the 220, 320, and 400. But first I'm going to do here. So we're getting close, probably another uh, hour of sanding or so. And then it'll be time for some sanding sealer and some grain popping and bark popping. It's going to look great. ever guessed that I would get this done not me this was this was a pile of work a pile of sanding I'll tell you and you might say it's just a pile of crap but that's okay I'm interested in your opinion so uh, leave a comment for sure let me know what you think about this thing I don't know what to call it I'll just call it a thing I wish I could tell you the sanding job is exceptional it's not if you really feel around you can feel some texture to some of this that should be smooth as silk. This in here is smooth as silk, I'll tell you that. And it is all sanded up through 400, but I just can't get some parts in here where I'm brushing. I just can't get it as good as I would like. It's been sanded through all the grits, but it's not silky smooth. When you comment, be honest with your comments. You're just not going to hurt my feelings. I know that this is very odd. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what its purpose is. I just was looking to do something different. And I don't think you can argue with that. I think I got different here. And your suggestions are always welcome. I get a lot of suggestions. Somebody will, somebody will tell me how I could have sanded inside here. Wrap sandpaper around a stick or something. I just couldn't figure out a way to get it to bend around these corners. So what I'm thinking is that, that the overall look of this piece is what people are going to see. They're not going to see that it isn't sanded flawlessly. They're just going to look at it and go, what in the heck is that? What was he thinking? And I guess I'm after that more than, more than oh my gosh, you did such a nice job of sanding. Sometimes you just can't. And this is one of those times where you just can't. I can't. You can. Tell me how. So I will get uh, at least two coats, probably three, of uh, sanding sealer on here. Boy, it's really soaking it up, and it's really going to soak it up now on that bark. So let me get a little more in my can here. Oops, all over the lathe bed. Nice going. Seal coat is what it's called. Uh, Zinzer seal coat. Folks are always asking me what kind of sanding sealer, how do I mix it. I don't mix it. It's pre-mixed Zinzer brand seal coat, which is a de-waxed, thinned out shellac product. I don't usually show you how I uh, smooth out this sanding sealer. I don't usually show that in my videos, but I will this time. I'm not going to use 4 out steel wool, which is what I normally use. So I'll get this finished up. I'm almost done here. I'll give it a good half an hour or so to set up. I'll come back out and turn the camera back on and show you how I'm going to smooth this out. And I am going to do it while it's spinning, I, I think, I hope. If I can't do it spinning, then I'm not going to be able to do a very good job of it, but I, I think I can. So I'll see you back here in a little bit. So these are the things I'm talking about. Um, finishing pads, I guess, maybe. Is that the correct term? So this one is coarser than this is. 
this is always my final buffing. So I'm going to start with this gray one. And I'm going to start on the easy part. So I'm going to spin this up about as fast as I feel comfortable with, which is probably about right there, just about 600 RPM. And this will certainly dull the finish in a hurry. And this, this is the easy part. Now here's where it's going to get a little trickier, because this is just spinning like crazy out here. So I'm just going to kind of stick that in there, and then I'm going to push a little harder and hope it kind of bunches up. Trying to keep my fingers away from everything. And I can't really move it around much. A little bit. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if this just grabs it right out of my fingers. And this isn't gonna do the greatest job, you know, if it was a if it was like the whole inside of the bowl, that would be a piece of cake, but This isn't wonderful. So I, I'm just, just kind of moving it around. Now I never do the bark. I never do. So let's see what that feels like. Oh, actually that feels pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that, that worked. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm happy with that. I'm surprised as well. So I'll do the same thing with the white one, but I'm going to do it in reverse. I don't always use the white one in between coats. I usually use it for my finish, my very last time buffing, but because that works so well. Famous last words. I just don't want to get my fingers in that bark. It's smooth, but it ain't that smooth, you know what I mean? Now if this does grab it, it's just going to pull it out of my fingers. It's not going to, it's not going to pull my fingers in there. And that brings some of that shine back, you can see, huh? And it smooths it even more. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll put another coat on just like I did before. Come back out here and do this same routine again. And up to three times. And then we're getting close. I'll bring you back when it's time to turn this thing around and remove that tenon. Well, I was going to save this for tomorrow because it's kind of late, 6 o'clock already. But I want to get it done. So let's get this off of the chuck. And get the chuck off of the lathe. And I've already chucked up a block of wood in my smaller jaws. I'm just going to put the non-slip fabric over that block of wood and then the piece. I can't call it a ball exactly. I don't know what to call it. And I still have my center hole there for reference. Half inch standard grind bowl gouge and start removing the tenon. Check again, see how I did. Oh yeah, got good clearance now. I think I'm going to cut a groove to delineate between the very bottom and this circle that I want to leave. A very small spindle gouge. Okay, so let's switch to a smaller gouge. We'll go with a 3 8 inch swept back gouge. It'll take a little bit of time. I'm going to try it my normal way, but I may, I may stop. My normal way is to remove the entire tenon on the lathe. But because this is out of balance and a kind of a heavy piece, it just may not be a good idea. If that breaks when I least expect it, it can do some damage to the bottom 
by hitting the tool rest. Slow it down to about 200 RPM. I'm applying a lot of sideward pressure towards the headstock. I have my right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when that little nub stops turning, then we'll know we're through. Like that. Success, we were lucky. So now I just have this to sand up, but of course I'll sand this whole three inch area. And I'll do that over here on the workbench. Well, there it is. One bad dream bowl. What do you think? Go ahead, be honest. I know it's the oddest thing. Certainly the oddest thing I've ever seen. Bad dream. Made out of plum wood. I think it was eight and a half. Is that what I said? Eight and a half wide by 14 long. I never did touch any part of the outside, so that dimension didn't change. I, I don't know what a good use for it is. I thought about putting a ball bearing in here. Let the cat chase it around. I don't know. That might work. Plum wood. Pretty, pretty wood. My goal when I do a live edge piece like this, generally, is to reveal as much of the wood as I can while leaving as much of the bark as I can. And so I think I took that to the extreme with this one. And that was kind of the idea, but I, I just didn't really know. There you go. Bad dream. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I sure would appreciate it. Also, if you like this video, you're probably a little bit odd like I am. If you're a subscriber, I truly appreciate that. Thank you very kindly. I'm over 2,000 now. And I, I realize that's not a lot compared to many, many turners out there. But for me, I'm really happy. And I'll tell you what, I have some of the best viewers out there. Some of the best comments both critical and complimentary, and I appreciate both. If you'd like to leave a comment, I, I respond to all of them, and I'd appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.